everybody. Uh, as mentioned, um, my name is Aristo, and I'm working directly to support the sales effort here in the Americas as the application engineer for Xsense. Um, so you see on the screen there, uh, this is the MBN solution, and uh, we have two different uh, solutions, and I want to talk about why they're perfect for ergonomics. Okay. So first off, the hardware is easy to set up with straps uh, that can fit most body types. Uh, so you can see on the screen there, there are some pictures of what the MBN Biomech window looks like, as well as the MBN Biomech link. Um, so the MBN window is a fully wireless solution, and the MBN link is the wired solution, uh, which has the extra functionality of an on-body data logging. Okay. So the next piece is our software. Uh, MBN Studio software has real-time 3D kinematic models of the human body. So we map uh, the 23 segments and 22 joint angles from the 17 motion trackers which are on the body. And uh, from those, uh, we provide the 3D global positions, accelerations, and other parameters and graph them uh, using the software. So you can see those uh, on the picture to the right. Uh, you also get the body center of mass as well. Uh, some of the output formats that we do have from MBN Studio uh, is our proprietary MBN X, which is an XML format. And we also have the output formats of CD, AVI, VVH, and FBX. And uh, so as we mentioned, uh, some of the integrations is that there's real-time streaming of all the data to Siemens Technomatix as well as the salt, UD3D Motion Builder Maya, and as well as EasySync. So Pierre will be talking about uh, some of that real-time streaming of that data uh, in a little bit. Uh, what I also wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, how some of our customers use Xsense, as well as um, you know what type of applications they're looking at. So uh, here's a kind of a, a brief overlook at you know some of the uh, applications which some of our customers are using Xsense for. And so the first one we have up there is uh, TNO, and TNO is a research organization in the Netherlands which has used this to evaluate the shoulder load in innovative order uh, pick workstations. We also have uh, Mercedes-Benz, which use this to analyze manual work processes in order to derive a suitable level of automation uh, and interactions between the human and the vehicle. And then we also have RIF, which is the research. And they've used this also to analyze uh, manual work processes. Uh, and then we also have Coventry University. They managed to use this to measure vehicle ingress and egress. We have um, over there on the bottom left hand corner there, Liberty Mutual uh, in conjunction with Harvard University is this for uh, continuous ambulatory assessment of joint loading in the occupational setting. Uh, we also have uh, NASA, which used it to uh, go ahead and analyze some of the uh, loading in space. And then on the right hand side, we have Siemens and the salt, uh, which are used for the VR uh, visualization aspects. And uh, just a couple other names to mention that, that aren't, uh, you know, on this uh, on this slide here. Uh, we also have Auburn University, which is uh, they're using this to also analyze uh, some of the vehicles um, and ingress and egress and things like that as well. Um, so just uh, to pass it over to Pierre now from Hapshin. Uh, he'll be going over some of the plugins that are available and some of the real-time streaming uh, capabilities of the Xsense system. 
So we're going to go ahead and pass the presenter rights over here to Pierre from Hapshin. Yeah, hello. Uh, so like Giovanni says, uh, I am sales manager of Hapshin. And uh, I personally drive the business in in US, so I spend a lot of time to to, to visit US and to do a lot of events, uh, customer visit uh, and demonstration. Uh, so I will cover first uh, what is Option and which which application that we will build on uh, the different uh, Siemens CAD software, Siemens and uh, and so. Um, the goal of the application is working closely to the, the reality, and that's why I, my presentation is interactive physics inside the for for ergonomics studio. So the first, our core business is like you see, it's not uh, human captors, is force feedback system originally. So, force feedback system is like you see, it's mechanical harm that they permit to feel something. So, that's why our historical market is medical application, is nuclear for master and slave operation, and it's a simulation inside a CAD environment. We have a lot of resellers everywhere in the world, and we have an office in Germany. And the company is born in 2001, and it's a French company. So we have a lot of okay. reference. So here you see uh, you see a list, uh, but with the logo you you see a lot of car company, um, French, uh, German, but also in Asia, uh, Japan, Korea, UK. So we deploy solution like I will talk just just after. So also aircrafts, aerospace. And all of them has the same requirement that real-time interaction for quick, quick decision and quick design. So the motivation on the beginning it was based on complexity assembly process. So the people want to manipulate part and see how they can manipulate and, and investigate an assembly. Uh, but quickly, uh, they see the needs of human and human factors because the integration between the product and the process in the same time. So the, um, the quick impact of any modification on product and on process that uh, show that the people, when they do the assembly, that's not only the question of assembly, but how to do the assembly. Um, and also for the, for the maintenance and maintainability. Uh, so the objective is re redu reducing the number of physical prototypes, validate assembly cr quickly, increase the number of tests because you could use directly on the digital markup, and the, the purpose of interaction is really important, and um, yeah, detect any problem quickly. You can you can resolve this problem by visual inspections when the the case is really simple or more complex, uh, like with a CAD iteration, uh, you clash, you, visit, you see the clash, you move the part, etc. but this process could be long, or you could use also automatic pass plan. Automatic pass plan gives you a result, but the result is theoretical, and it could be not uh, appropriate when you have a robot or when you have a, a human, then it could be the task, or uh, yeah, they can uh, they can take care of the environment. So that's why our approach is really integrate the engineer on the interaction. So they could manipulate by themselves. So we have two approach. One is based on an haptic device. So they manipulate. We create the physics and they manipulate the part and they figure with the environment a real time clash to see what could be the better. So on assembly, you could have multiple solutions, but which is really the best on a process point of view, on an ergonomy point of view, on a tooling point of view. So interact, it's really a question of design and also engineers from different uh, point of view can share experience and, and try to find the best solution. 
And the second approach is really integrate the virtual human. So that means that you have the real human and the virtual human that they do the task and they quick decide what is good, what is bad. They can evaluate the complexity, um, the strength, uh, the, the comfort, uh, everything related to the ergonomy. And, uh, and validate also by manually which the tool, which how they need to be designed the tool to do a good job. So uh, our approach is really putting the man in the loop of the decision. And with the man, they can really interact with the environment. So I will show you different uh, video and different use cases. Use cases. So uh, you see the pictures all the time. Uh, I take two examples. One is Alstom on the top, and on the bottom is um, Briar. So you see that on the top, on the, uh, you see on the first one, on the left side, the CAD software with a human. So you see the software from uh, MVN, uh, animate the mannequin, and you see the men uh, that they sh do the manipulation. So this is the case of Alstom. It's an ergonomic study for the passenger. So they really want to do analysis on the safety and on the comfort, comfort zone. How is comfort the seat? So traditionally, they do directly inside uh, the, the train. The second is the umbrella. So you see in the middle, so they are inside uh, the motors and they want to investigate how they can do the maintenance. So it's uh, safety, accessibility and procedures. And the last one, I don't have any uh, pictures, but it's Tesla. We do an uh, ergonomy study directly with the workers. So it's for safety, comfort, and quick study. But they use also on virtual reality. So that means that they have a room with an HMD. They put the HMD, and, and, the, and the workers can visualize how they could do the task, and they can investigate how to improve their environment to have a better, uh, better uh, work zone, a better accessibility, a better tooling for its comfort. So uh, yeah, we work all the time on the two aspects, on the real data or on the virtual data. This is testimony from two customers, uh, Peugeot. Uh, you could read, I think you will get this. But uh, the last uh, test that Peugeot has done is you see, this is a part of the motor. It's not the full motor because they are uh, private information that they all don't want to show. But they really want to see how the man can access with different key and which could be the best key to access to the right uh, screw to unscrew and screw. So it's typical uh, cross use case that they use. Uh, Zikorsky, it's a helicopter company. It's more accessibility on uh, the um, uh, inside the helicopter because uh, the constraint is very huge to access to any part and to do maintainability and and, uh, and also process. So uh, before I will describe a little bit more uh, which product that we have and uh, which technology that we have built, I will share with you th this video that we have done uh, in preparation. So, yeah. So we have built a video where you have different vision. On the middle, you have uh, Arista that they do the job. On the left side, you have uh, in the CAD software, and on the right side, uh, you have the vision of the MVM software. So. Uh, all the time, they stream the data. What is really important with the NVN is that software and this hardware is really simple to set up, really quick to set up. That means that you could be ready in two or three minutes. Uh, they do a calibration of their software. And in our software, we don't need to do any calibration. Uh, we stream direct, direct, and we can attach, and the mannequin will be animated immediately. So th this, this features is really, really helpful when you do a study like that. It should be available quickly. You need to manipulate quickly. So this is really important. And uh, 
this, this is this is really a good a good product for that. Uh, remember, and that's all the time when we do a demonstration, all the time the people say, wow, because it's so quick and it's so simple to use them. So you see, I repeat again here, uh, how the motion it, it is. So you see the fluent, you see the latency. We don't have any latency. Uh, it's true, we don't have too many parts, too, too many 3D data inside, but we focus on, on the human, so that means that we don't necessarily see a, the, the, full, uh, the full factory or the full model because we are focused on where the mannequin is working. So uh, that's why we have all the time a good latency inside the piece of software. Um, that's true, we can also be compatible with HMDs. It's really now most popular everywhere, and a lot of people want to try with HMD. So we could see the highs uh, that they see exactly what they saw, what they do. So it's really more easy for them. Yeah, I, I let you show with this, and uh, and after I will describe a little bit more how it works and how is the value of our piece of software. Uh, because it's not only moving the part like this, this is the most important thing, but we have a lot of more features. I will stop this and move forward. So this is our technology. So it's called IPSI for Interactive Physics Simulation. So that means that on the, I start top left. Top left, the IP, IPC can read any data inside the CAD software. And they transfer all that data to their engine where we have a collision system and we have a kinematics control. So that means that we could collide with any part and we could read also the kinematics of the robot or the kinematics of the mannequin. And we will use that base for the simulation. Also, we have interface with input device, like you have seen uh, here, uh, an haptic device, gloves, and VM. So that data stream to IPSI and they can animate in real time. And the result is on the CAD software, we animate in real time with real time clash, complex kinematics, full mannequin, by Configure 5, we can reduce if you want only the upper part of body or only one arm, one hand, we can reduce and we can animate automatically everything inside the CAD software. This is our technology. So our technology is what we call IPSI and we have developed a middle, that middleware API and we integrate this technology on different CAD software. Our product. So I tell you that we are a force feedback developer and sales. So this is the product. And this product is used in conjunction with the mannequin. Like you see on the right bottom, the pictures from Herbus. So they have an haptic device. They track the full body inside their software, they use HMDs, and they can animate uh, directly on the digital markup. So this is the 350. So and um, everything is real time. What module that we have? So we have three modules. We have what we call the core module. The core module is the basic one. It's integration about force feedback between objects. On each object, we can define uh, kinematics, like you see, prismatic, ink, rotation, translation. We can simulate the weight of the part. We can create container. And most important, we can record the trajectory. Typically, typical use for assembly, tooling, maintainability, maintenance. The second module, it's a human. So human can read Jack Jill in the case of Siemens or Human Builder in the case of Dassault. They can activate real-time contact. They can uh, feel also can be complementary with haptic device. We have grasping tools so they can 
graph path. And most important, also, we can record trajectories used for ergonomy study, human tool, human assembly, and, and maintainability too. And the last module is the robot. So robot, we can load the robot definition, we can animate in real time the robot, real time contact, we can do welding of the tooling, free segment, and also most important, record. All the time on each module, you have an output of the data that you could store directly in the CAD software. Record the trajectory of an object, of a human, of a robot. This is the product that we have. So for DASO V5, we have a product for CATIA that they integrate the core human and robot. We have a product for V5 that they integrate the core human and robot. And for the 3D experience platform, we have the product also for the core. Uh, the first one is for core, the second one is core and human, and the third one is core and robot. For Siemens, for classic jack, we have a product called IPC for IPSI for Jack, we integrate core, human, and robot. And we have another one for Technomatics or Process Simulate called IPC for Technomatics, who integrate core, human, and robot. So that means that we have a plugin inside of their piece of software and that plugin interface directly with, with the engine that it runs in background and they animate in real time the GIF position, the GIF clash, the GIF animation about uh, object, robot, and human. And for Unity 3D, we work with the partners to enable the same time of features. Some short features. For example, here you see on the left the clash between the mannequin and the part. So they, they try to pick, uh, to grab the part. And you see also on the knee, they have their collision. So that's why on the, uh, I take the second pictures because they change this posture to enable, to disable the, the, uh, the collision between the key. So we, we activate the collision on the full mannequin and we can support up to four mannequins at the same time in real time with collision inside. Another example is catch and release. So any object, can be virtually catch, or if you have a tooling, you can also have the tooling at the same time that you manipulate. On the right side, we can mix haptics. So when you grab haptics and you will feel, so the mannequin can feel what they are doing. So the, the, the concept of the perception is better than an object that they fly in the sky in the environment. With haptic, they good and they have a good perception. Next one, on the left side, it's collaborative works. So that means that the robot is animated and the mannequin can manipulate. So if I control the robot with my haptic arm, also it will push the mannequin. Also. So yeah, we, we can do collaborative things directly in the CAD software. And the last one, it could be connected with the ergo tool. So that means when you manipulate, you have, you can see the comfort zone when it's red or, ye or green in that case. Uh, so yeah, we can, we are really complementary tools inside the software and enabling all the features that you have in the CAD software. 